that's been happening and just start looking for love alright let's get back into it and remember sleep is important make sure you're getting enough and remember pet every dog the solo from Kid Charlemagne is the greatest guitar solo ever recorded yeah yeah I would say Oh, hopefully I got enough rest. So I arrive at Amanda's school and check in the front desk. They give me a bright orange visitor sticker and send me on my way. I'm barely awake and feeling pretty haggard, but hopefully nobody will notice. I check my watch and am relieved to see that I'm only two minutes late. Was it room 103 or 108? I spot a youth standing at the locker and approach him for help. Excuse me, do you know where Mr. Vega's classroom is? The youth turns around and looks me up and down with heavily lined eyes. Uh, come on, kid, I'm late for a meeting. Mr. Who? Mr. Vega. I don't know. Have you tried the exit? <laughs> okay, wise guy. Are you going to help me or not? Oh, fine. Up those stairs and to the left. Can't miss him. I head up the stairs and walk around, unable to find Mr. Vega's class anywhere. After a couple of minutes searching, I head back downstairs. That punky youth sent me on a wild goose chase. I get back to where that low-rent Jared Way is standing, fully ready to give him a piece of my mind, when suddenly a head pops out of the classroom next to his locker. Oh. Lucian. Lucian, don't you have a third period to get to? Uh, fine, Mr. Vega. Uh. Wow. Now I'm officially ten minutes late. I glare at him as he walks away. We're not cool. Um... You must be in. This period's almost over. Would you mind waiting in the back? Hmm? Mr. Vega leads me in, and I take a seat in one of the comically small students' desks in the back. I might get stuck in this. Hmm? Alright, where were we? Now, who can tell me about the unreliable of the narrator in J.D. Salinger's Catcher in the Rye. Oh. I think that'll be the voice I do. Yes, Colin. Colin stands up and does the thing where he blows him into the crook of his elbow to make a fart noise. Hmm. The whole class erupts in laughter. Hmm. All right, all right, everybody. Very funny, Colin. Please sit down. Ah. Now, Holden Caulfield is an unreliable narrator in the sense that... The bell for the end of the period rings. All the students immediately get up and make a break for the door. Whoa. Remember to do the reading and answer the response questions on page 194 in your textbook. Nobody's listening. Oh. Or not, I guess. Mr. Vega turns to me and sighs. Oh. Middle school is right. Don't you teach high schoolers? <sighs> Both, you know, budget cuts. Right. Oh. Thanks so much for coming in. No problem, Mr. Vega. Oh. Please, call me Hugo. I don't know. I don't normally do these impromptu parent-teacher meetings, but I'm sure, as you know, Amanda's a very bright student, and I'm concerned about her recent behavior. What's going on? Eh. Amanda has never been the most engaged student, but I know she cares. Recently, though, she's been falling behind. She's not completing assignments, and she's been doing rather poorly on tests. I'd normally chalk this up to senioritis, but this is strange. I thought Amanda always shared everything with me. 
It hadn't even crossed my mind that something might be wrong. Hmm. I just wanted to ask, is everything okay at home? You just move, she's fine, she has a tendency to bottle things up. Well, I mean, the most obvious is yes, we just moved. So... Yeah, we're gonna go with that. We just moved. Because it's true. Well, we just moved recently, but it was only to the other side of town, and Amanda was more excited about it than I was. Ah! See, if you can talk to her about it, I know she values you a great deal and would appreciate your guidance. If she keeps heading down this road... I know how important art school is to her, and I would hate to see her miss out on scholarship money that she clearly deserves. I'll make sure to talk to Amanda. Thanks for letting me know, Hugo. Oh. Anytime. On my way out, I stop, thinking for a moment. I turn to Hugo. Hey, uh, Hugo. Ah. Yes? Did ever catch that, Rye? Hmm? Yes. I leave the classroom and make my way out of the school. I'm still a little bit in shock that Amanda was able to hide this so well from me. She's always been such a force of positivity in my life, especially after we lost her mother. Amanda must have been done with classes by the, for the day by now. I'm sure she would appreciate a ride home, and maybe I can talk to her about what's going on. Hmm. I pull up to the carpool, and Amanda hops in the passenger seat. So, did you have fun gossiping about me? Mr. Vega and I actually just gossiped about our celebrity crushes. So you talked about M Mario Batali the whole time? It was a very productive meeting. Uh. I'm pretty hungry. Can we grab some dinner? Sure thing. We can make something at home. Let's go to the mall food court. I mean, this is kind of important. I need to be an involved dad here. But... She might... Hmm. No, she might think something's up if we go to the food court. But, if I wait until we get home to eat, she'll probably be crabby. And you know how teens are. Oh, you were a teen at one point. Hell, I was a teen at one point. Oh, God, I was a teen at one point. Ugh. You know what? Let's let's do let's do food court. Does that sound good to you? Yeah, sure. Why the mall? Jeez, can a dad take his daughter to the mall? Will you buy me things? I will buy you a thing, singular. Sounds like a deal to me. Drive in silence for a short while. Amanda plays a game on her phone. I really should say something. You know, sometimes when a kid gets older, they find that they have to keep things hidden from their parents. And that's okay, because sometimes that's what kids do. And that's okay. But also, sometimes it's good to have the parents' perspective, because, you know, maybe the parents have also dealt with similar situations. And maybe they're a little cooler than you give them credit for. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is, it's good to share. I love you. Have you been reading my tweets? You have a Twitter? What? N never mind. Look, sweetie, Mr. Vegas said you haven't been participating in class and that you're not turning things in. Oh, I'm fine, Pops, senioritis and all that. I, 
thought you liked Mr. Vega's class. Hmm. It's fine. He's fine. We pull up to a stoplight and I eye Amanda. She's still texting. Just... I want you to know that you can talk to me about anything. Ugh. Uh-huh. I can tell that whatever it is, she doesn't want me to know. Uh, she doesn't want me knowing about it. And that's frustrating. Uh, I heard Emma R is going to that fancy art school in California. That's exciting. Yep. Are you bummed that you guys aren't going to the same school? Yep. Amanda keeps texting. She stifles a laugh. What's so funny? Uh, <laughs> it's, uh... I, I don't think you get it. Okay. Who are you texting? Uh. Noah? Who's Noah? My friend. Does he go to your school? Uh. Yep. Do you like Noah? Hey. What? No. Dad. Ugh. I can't believe you would. Aww. Dad. I mean, jeez. Why would you? Ugh. Gross. Sorry. Sorry. Just asking. Dad, he's just my friend. Guys and girls can be friends. He's my friend. Hmm. Okay, okay. Jeez. This is going well. Well, good talk. Love you, kiddo. She leans forward and turns up the radio. I guess that conversation's over. To the mall, then. It's okay if you don't come in first, just make sure you have health insurance. <laughs> we arrive at the mall. A big indoor shopping center with a couple of different floors. It's kind of dead, but that doesn't stop a mall security guard from yelling at a group of loitering teens. Let's eat something disgusting for dinner. Hell yeah! Language, Missy. Huh? Heck yeah? Better. Huh. We approach the food court and evaluate our options. There's greasy restaurant after greasy restaurant. My heart burns just looking at the menus. And nobody looks happy to be there. What are you in the mood for? Bread dipped in sugar? Bread with cheese on it? Or do you just want me to inject some fat directly into your bloodstream? I extend my hand to her. Would you do me the honor of sharing some nachos? She takes my hand with a grin. It would make me the happiest, cheesiest girl alive. We order a giant pile of chips and unnaturally orange cheese from a very unenthusiastic and possibly stoned teenager. We take a seat at a rickety table and dig in. Hey. These are bad. These are very bad. But also, strangely... Delicious. Aww. We have to eat through the pain. We enjoy the fluorescent, cheesy goodness together until we're all out of nachos. So? Uh. Something's been bothering me for a while. Can you explain memes to me? Uh. <sighs> Which meme? Uh, all memes? Uh. Amanda sighs deeply and places her head in her hands. Aww. Dad, it's complicated. See, memes are inside jokes shared by a bunch of people that get less funny the more people do it. So the problem is that by the time a meme gets to you, Dad, all us youths have already done the joke to death. <sighs> and what's worse than that is 
that movies and TV and video games will try to jump in on the meme train, but just based on how long it takes to make them, the meme will be long dead by the time it comes out. So it just dates it and isn't funny. Oh shit, what up? Uh. Dad, please. Oh. Anyway, changing the subject. Where to now? Wanna go to that goth store? Hmm. What? You know, the one that's all black and tries to establish itself as anti-establishment despite being an exact representation of the establishment. I don't know what store you're talking about. You know, the one where you can buy chain wallets and it's basically an assault on what people fought so hard against in the punk and hardcore movement of the 70s and 80s? Huh? Dude, you gotta be more specific. The one you threw up in that one time. Oh, that one! <laughs> I love my daughter. Amanda runs into the store with me trailing behind her. She makes a beeline for the back. All right! There it is! You can still see the outline, kinda. I'm so proud. Speech! Amanda. Yeah! Speech! 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 All right, I'll do it if you stop chanting! Uh. Amanda stops immediately. I clear my throat. <clears throat> Thank you all for joining us here today to commemorate an historic moment that would forever shape history. On a day very much like today, some five years ago, our very own Amanda Ann Torchetti had too much blue raspberry slushy on an outing to the mall. Mm -hmm. After begging her father to take her to dead goth and beyond to buy rainbow suspenders, she proceeded to throw up all over a display of my chemical romance merchandise. Her loving father then had to pay for said merchandise, which to this day remains among our possessions. Ranko! 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 Amanda is moved. She begins clapping. Slow at first, then faster, and more vigorously. Several other patrons turn their heads. One of them also starts clapping. I bow my head. Hey! Oh, hey, chain wallets! While Amanda busies herself looking at a band at band t-shirts, I try to find something of interest to myself. Not much for a dad to look at in dead goth and beyond. Pursue the band t-shirts. Look at ironic mugs. Check the clearance bin for hot deals. Well, I think this is actually a good spot for me to stop today. Which means it's time once again to set up some type of um, questionnaire, so to speak. It'll be up on Twitter later, linked to said video. So which am I going to do? Pursue the band t-shirts, look at ironic mugs, or check the clearance bin for hot deals? So just like, share, and subscribe. Ring the bell to stay notified. And please, please, please... Help me out here. I'm Ian Torch, and I'm just looking for love. <laughs>